The Guardian News. Travel ban decision suggests Supreme Court would be tough to convince. The federal government can now ask the Supreme Court to review Thursday's ruling to uphold a temporary restraining order on Donald Trump's travel ban. But the U.S. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals' unanimous ruling suggests that the administration will struggle to make a convincing argument. President Vow see you in court. As Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco unanimously rules nationwide hall to travel ban must stay in place. With one seat vacant on the Supreme Court, the federal government would have to persuade one of the four liberal-leaning justices to break ranks. In the event of a 4-4 to -four tie, the Ninth Circuit ruling remains in place. The Supreme Court could also sidestep controversy and defer an appeal, leaving the ruling in place as the case works its way through other courts. The Trump administration could choose to build its case in district court but a tweet, sent by the president not long after the order was released, suggested he would take a request to the eight-justice Supreme Court as soon as possible. See you in court, Trump tweeted in capital letters. The security of our nation is at stake. The Ninth Circuit's ruling applies only to the question of whether or not the earlier ruling by District Judge James Robart, in Seattle, was correct in issuing the temporary restraining order. The separate legal proceedings to determine whether or not the travel ban is constitutional remain underway in Robart's court, where the states of Washington and Minnesota originally brought suit against the federal government. But the court battle over the temporary injunction still provides a preview of what's to come in that case. The Ninth Circuit was tasked with determining whether the federal government had shown a likelihood of winning its case case and a likelihood or suffering immediate and irreparable harm if the restraining order was not lifted. The government failed to show either, the Ninth Circuit wrote. One of the government's key arguments was that the state of Washington lacked standing the legal right to sue but the court ruled that it did, naming for example the costs to state universities. The court also note d the serious nature of the allegations the states have raised with respect to their religious discrimination claims. That statement is probably not a good sign for the Trump administration, which has argued, despite Trump's own campaign statements, that the travel ban is not aimed at Muslims. The government also offered the novel legal theory that irreparable harm would befall the country if the judicial branch of the government had the power to review executive orders relating to national security or immigration. The three judges showed little patience for this argument during a hearing on Tuesday, saying that the government had failed to show how a temporary restraining order would cause harm. But they brought the hammer down in the ruling on the government's claim that the White House had unreviewable authority on matters of national security. Judges upheld order issued last week to prevent 90-day travel ban from seven Muslim-majority countries and one 20-day freeze on U.S. admission of any refugees. There is no precedent to support this claimed unreviewability, which runs contrary to the fundamental structure of our constitutional democracy, they wrote. Although courts owe considerable deference to the president's policy determinations with respect to immigration and national security, it is beyond question that the federal judiciary retains the authority to adjudicate constitutional challenges to executive action. The opinion could also be read as a sign that Trump's continued denigration of federal judges and the courts, questioning their legitimacy and motives, will not go without a cost for the president. Indeed, at one point the judges appeared to scold the Trump administration for failing to do their homework. In a particularly caustic section, they pointed out that the government has not produced any evidence of a terrorist attack carried out by someone from one of the seven questions. Rather than present evidence to explain the need for the executive order, the government has taken the position that we must not review its decision at all, they wrote. We disagree.